the president and CEO of the Inter-American Economic Council. He is not only the founder of that council, uh, and, but he was instrumental in establishing a bipartisan 30-member United States Congressional Caribbean Caucus, an entity that is dedicated and devoted to strengthening the relationship between the U.S. and the countries of the Caribbean. It's no surprise that Secretary Clinton will be actually going to uh, Barbados, actually, I think, tomorrow. This morning. Uh, uh, oh, this morning, yep. sorry, uh, to meet with uh, the Caribbean heads. I think that's a very good uh, development. And uh, uh, Mr. Federman has also helped administer the Future World Leaders Summit for the Presidential Classroom in Washington, D.C., and he's a graduate of Temple University and earned his law degree from American University in Washington, D.C. So we really have a, a, a very good group, and I think perhaps the best is to, to let uh, President Toledo kick us off, and he can give us a tour de raison how he sees uh, many of these uh, challenges that we have uh, talked about of trade and integration of the Americans. Let me just say at the outset that he was also instrumental in moving Peru in a trade agreement with the United States. I remember <laughs> seeing him doing the, doing the people's work, that is getting vote one by one. So with that, I turn it over to President Toledo. That's great when you have a panel and the leader of the panel is a friend of yours. <laughs> uh, Luis Alberto Moreno is, is a friend and he leads an institution for which I have an enormous respect. An institution that's ours, and when I say ours, it's our hemisphere. And I'm glad that Mr. Bourne joined as well as uh, uh, Barry Featherman. Let me, let me, Luis Alberto, if, if you may, play and put in context the subject of this uh, dialogue. In a few weeks, uh, the G20s is going to meet in Canada. And there are some challenges uh, that the region and the world are confronting together. Question is, what are we going to do in this global world and as a region? What concretely are we going to do to prevent that a third financial crisis will emerge? 2009, 2008, 2009 had been devastated. Not as much if I would have been, that crisis would have taken place 25 years ago. But from the part of Latin America, we were expecting that by growing at an average of 6% average region for eight years, we were expecting that around 6 million people will leave that dark hole of poverty. But as a consequence of the, uh, the global financial crisis, the region did not only, when was not able to get out those 6 million people out of poverty, but three, million new people got into poverty. That's part of the tab that the region is paying for the global financial crisis. And this crisis, by the way, this time, was not produced by Latin America. So we, ho we hope that the wisdom and the courage will prevail in this uh, G20 meeting for the leaders to take concrete and measurable actions as to what we will do uh, to prevent or to witness uh, a replication of a global financial crisis. That the region and the world do not give the bankers a blank check. And I'm talking about, I'm talking about the commercial bankers. Number, number two, we need to pick up our uh, trend, grow trend again. We need to grow. I know that my passion is uh, poverty, inequality, and social exclusion. But to be honest, whatever strategy, uh, uh, whatever strategy we adopt to confront poverty, we cannot do it without sustained rates of economic growth. Because the name of the game is not also to redistribute poverty. 
And so to pick up this broad trend is vital. Third, we need to uh, be aware that in order to provide sustainability to the growth trend, we need to have clear rules of the game to attract capital investment, but at the same time, we need to be explicit about the corporate social responsibility. Number four, we need to be explicit that in the stimulus policies to attract capital investment, we need to demand sensibility about the environment. And number five, in the process of attracting investment for growth, particularly in the extractive sectors, and I know that Canada has a substantial investment in mining in Peru and in Latin America, we need to be sensitive about the cultural idiosyncrasies of the communities where the mines are located. Now, if that's the context, the question is, what is the relationship, what role does trade played in achieving this objectives as well as in the effort of integration? Luis Alberto, I think the trade is vital. It's absolutely crucial, just as much as uh, capital investment. But I want to sell my products, not just gold, silver, copper, oil, gas. I want to sell products with aggregate value. I want to sell products where are produced by women and men who have knowledge, who have access to a good quality of health and education in order to provide aggregate value to our production. I would like to continue to sell my grapes to China, or my mangoes to China, or my asparagus to a European Union, but with aggregate value that is done with the hands of the women and men, not just raw process. We need to go from raw material exporters to a knowledge economist. So trade, yes. Maybe we should use that income of the gold that is at its highest, it has been a few weeks ago, to have that income to invest in the minds of our people. So trade with aggregate value. Second, you know, I don't think Latin America is really desperately asking the developed world for assistance and cooperation or giving money. I think we have passed that stage. I think that the region is saying to North American, to European, you know, we are partners, but horizontally. Maybe it's a need for redefining the items of the agenda uh, between the United States and Latin America. What we are asking is that if we are gonna have a free trade agreement and a trade relationship, that trade relationship need to be a, a two ways freeway. If you're asking us not to subsidize our agricultural product, well, I have the moral authority to ask you to do the same. Fair. United States, uh, Latin America is no longer the backyard of the United States. In the last 30 years, a dramatic changes have taken place, as you well know, my friend, as you know. Dramatic changes have taken place in the region, economically, investment, diversification, diversification markets, diplomatically, a new players are in, in the world. We have now G20, and we're gonna have uh, Brazil 